My name is Associate Professor Erin McManaman, and I would just like to especially acknowledge the amazing work in making this short video of Fiona Wong, a medical student at University of Queensland, and also to Dr. Sasha Mortimer, who has contributed very much to helping patients with HS. Today we're going to talk about what is hydradenitis suppurativa. While the name actually suggests sweat gland inflammation and the suppurativa referring to pus, it turns out this name is, is a misnomer and it has actually nothing to do with the sweat glands. What it is caused by is the follicular unit or the hair follicle unit. This unit gets blocked and there's a subsequent abnormal and massive inflammatory response that is involved with lots of cytokines which we know are in high levels in both the blood and the tissue samples of patients with HS. And these cytokines are pro-inflammatory chemicals and they are interleukins such as interleukin 1, 17 and tumor necrosis factor alpha to mention just a few. We know these ones are in high levels in tissue and blood and we know these are now the targets of some of our new and most exciting treatments for the disease. We know that it's characterized by recurrent abscesses and boils that tend to happen in the axilla, groin and buttock most commonly, but it can be in sites all over the body. And this is thought to be due to heat and friction in those sites. We know that these areas are painful, red, swollen and hot, and these are all the characteristics of inflammation. And it's our own body's immune system malfunctioning causing this disease, which we now know of as an auto-inflammatory disease. And you can think of it similarly to psoriasis or inflammatory bowel disease or Crohn's disease, which have similar pathways of pathogenesis. So we know the first step is the follicular occlusion. And we know patients have a genetic predisposition to this disease. About 50% of patients will have a positive family history of HS. There is hormonal influences, such as going through puberty and hormonal changes, which can make the disease more likely to onset in the late teens and 20s. And then there are a bunch of environmental exposures which make it more likely, the most important of which is smoking. We know if you're a smoker, you're about 13 times more likely to get HS, and that's because smoking directly stimulates that arm of the immune system and those cytokines we spoke about before to create inflammation. Other exposures such as obesity can increase the rates possibly through heat and friction in the skin and dietary issues have had a lot of attention. Nothing's been really well proven but it does seem like in about a third of patients diets high in fat, sugars and dairies can contribute and some patients will find anti-inflammatory or Mediterranean diets to be helpful. So step one is we know this little hair follicle gets blocked with keratin and step two is really the, the most important part of this terrible, painful disease is this abnormal inflammatory cytokine response. And you get all these inflammatory cells coming to the area. They then cause swelling of the hair follicle and eventual rupture of that hair follicle, spewing all those inflammatory cytokines out into the dermal tissue where they're not meant to be. They recruit more of their friends and it also ruptures and produces stem cells from the follicle, which are what we believe then starts to create these sinus tract areas where you're growing new skin under the skin along in those deep layers. And that's what causes these deep sinus tracts, which are often connected to each other. Um, they're very inflamed. They can go on for years and years flaring in the one spot. So a lot of our treatments now are aimed at all these different aspects of the disease in an order to control the inflammation, to control the hormones, and once you've got those chronic sinus tracts and scarring, often then surgery is the only way to remove that. But we do hope in the future with better targeted therapies, we will prevent people ending up having those chronic scar tracts and we can treat the disease earlier, diagnose it earlier and reduce this impact in patients' quality of life. 